So this is making a visual novel in Unreal Engine 4 Part 2. And just to uh, catch you up, in Part 1, what we did was create a really basic small scene using um, an open office spreadsheet. Then we brought that into Unreal Engine 4 as a data table. And we created a struct that would recognize the rows and columns of that data table. So now that we have that, this tutorial is going to show you the process of um, interpreting that data table within Unreal Engine 4 and using it to actually play a scene. So now that we have our scene in Unreal, uh, we want some way uh, for it to launch and play out. So this is going to be a little bit complex. Um, this was tricky for me to figure out and uh, put in for the first time. So I'm going to be adding um, a lot of different things that may not all seem to connect right away, but I'll try to explain as I go, and you'll see how they all start to speak to each other as we go. So for starters, I'm going to create what I call um, the scene template. Once again, that's just going to be a basic actor, so we can make a blueprint. I'm going to call this scene template. Open that up, go to our event graph here. So the scene template is essentially going to be the actor in the world that plays a scene. Um, it's going to be our kind of master blueprint uh, that figures out how to interpret um, these uh, data tables over here and play them out in the game. So I'm going to give it a variable here, new variable, array of rows, I'm mainly naming things just by habit here. This is going to be um, an array that contains all the rows of the scene over here. So we're going to um, I think we have to yeah. We want the variable type to be the VN scene struct. And then we're going to click this icon over here to turn it into an array. So Basically, this variable here is going to hold all of the data that we're um, bringing in from the data table. So now we've got our basic scene template blueprint here with a variable that's going to hold those. Next up, we want to create an actor that's going to launch the scene to begin with because we need something um, that, that gets this uh, to react and play the scene. So once again, new blueprint, just going to make a basic actor here, call it NPC, touch click actor, open that up, just a basic blueprint here to, to begin with. But how you should think of this is... Um, whatever the player interacts with to launch a scene. So like in our scenario here with a 2D side-scrolling environment, maybe we want uh, this character to walk up to another character and press enter and launch a scene. So to do that, we're going to take our touch click actor here and we're going to turn it into an NPC character. And I just have some basic artwork here that I'm going to use, nothing fancy. It's a PNG I'm just going to drag in. And I'm really not organizing as I go. Uh, you definitely want to organize a bit more if you're actually creating a large scale project that's going to get more complicated. Uh, but for the tutorial, I'm just kind of dropping things here in the main directory. So this is the PNG. I'm going to right click, create sprite. And now we've got a sprite that can exist in the world. I'm going to drag this sprite into our blueprint. It's probably going to be huge. But we can check that by now taking our, let me save all here, taking the NPC touch click actor 
and dragging that in, and yes, it is huge. So let's go and make this a bit smaller. I'm going to lock the scale ratio. And let's go for 0.3. Oh boy, how about 0.4? Okay, that's a little more reasonable. Let's make sure it's actually lining up correctly here. I might need it to be a little smaller. It's further away than I thought. Anyway, you can fiddle with that with your own assets, but I won't get too perfectionist about it for this. But now when we play, um, here's this other sprite that's in the world. So how might we interact with that sprite? Personally, I like to uh, use click events. I believe unless we add physics to it, it's going to stay there. So I'm going to do that so that you can actually walk past it. It's just a little bit further back here so that it's actually going to be behind your actor. So uh, personally I like to be able to click um, on things with my mouse in a PC game. So really quickly I'm going to set that up also for us. We're going to go into our main character here. Uh, in the template you can find him in blueprints and 2D side scroller character. Going to go here to our event begin play so that it fires um, every time uh, our player controller is created and initiated. I'm going to get player controller and just run a few commands here that are going to enable the mouse. First of all, show mouse cursor. Set that to true. Uh, next, I'm going to get enable uh, mouse over events. Whoops. We want to set enable mouse over events. Want that to be true. And finally, the other one enable mouse, uh, enable click events. Fortunately, it knew what I was going for here. Set enable click events. So all of these are good commands that you can use uh, to make sure you can use your mouse in your game. Also, I'm going to be, I want to preview this in a new editor window. Again, this is personal preference. Okay, so now we can actually see the mouse. Um, it doesn't, doesn't do much yet, but uh, it's there and we're going to be able to click on things. So again, there are all sorts of ways that you you gonna you can <laughs> launch your scene uh, in the game, depending on the sort of game you want to make. I like to be able to click on things, so that's how I'm setting that up. All right. So we want the scene to launch when you click on this NPC character here. I'm gonna go back to our NPC actor, go into the event graph. Um, if you search actor on clicked, then um, fortunately you already have an event here that Unreal has set up for you. Okay, so now that you can click on the NPC character in the world, what do we want to happen when you click on them? We're going to want to launch uh, the scene that we created. So um, we're going to tie that here to the event on clicked. Now, what we'll need to do is create an instance of this scene template for starters. So I'm going to say spawn actor from class. Just going to drop it in here. That's a really nice thing you can do on Unreal. If you've got it selected in your content browser, you can just click this arrow to drop it in. Um, we're going to need to give it a transform 
In this case, it doesn't really matter because it's just going to kind of hang out there invisibly launching our scene. Uh, so we'll just get the transform of the NPC character here. Get actor transform. And we'll use that. And for the sake of uh, planning out for a larger scale, scale project, um, we always want to control what we're creating and make sure we don't have um, more than one created at once. So I'm actually going to create a variable here called scene playing, just a Boolean. Compile and the default is going to be false. We're going to say if a scene's not already playing, spawn this. And we're going to make sure to destroy it when the scene's done to make sure that not more than one is out at once. We're going to go ahead and set this to true. Let's just even put that first off the bat here. Set scene playing as true. Right now, our scene template is still a blank canvas. So we're going to set it up so that it can actually play a scene. I'm going to go ahead and make an event here. Add custom event. I'm going to call it Initiate new scene. I'm going to want to have an, uh, an input here, and that's going to be a data table. Yeah, did I do that right? Let's see. Data table, object reference. And let me tell you something. It was only uh, recently with Unreal Engine 4 that these became variables. This whole process was a lot more complicated before uh, we could treat data tables as variables. So I am so happy uh, to Unreal that this is now a feature. Um, it this, this tutorial would probably be a lot longer if that was not still a thing. So just uh, be glad you can do this. <laughs> so now we have this uh, event that we can launch called Initiate New Scene. We're going to go back to our NPC touch click actor and it's going to tell what we just created to initiate a new scene. So what we have happening is you click uh, the NPC character that fires this event here and launches a scene if one isn't already playing. The scene template gets created invisibly out here. And this fires to initiate a new scene. So we only have one scene right now, which is the, the little one we created about the weather. Our scene one here, I'm going to drop it in. Obviously, if you were making a larger scale project, um, a place like this would be where you'd add in all sorts of conditions about which scene is going to play, depending on where you are in the game, or maybe if you've already seen uh, this scene before. In our case, we just want to get this working right now and we want to play the only scene that we have. So we've, we've put it in and here is that event in the scene template. Now we already created a variable called array of rows, which is going to hold all the information of the scene. So I'm going to get that. So I'm going to pull from the data table that's getting fed into this function. I'm going to get the data table row names. Uh, so just to clarify and help you understand what's going on here, the the row names are our numbers here. Um, that's why I just leave them as numbers. We don't really use them for anything except, uh, you know, as an ID basically for each row. That's going to help um, Unreal understand um, and interpret each row. So when we go back into our actor here, our scene template, we're getting an array of the row names. We're going to put those into a for each loop. So 
So for every row, we're going to pull that out for each row name, we're going to pull that out and get all the data from it. The data table is going to be connected to this loop body. So for each element here. So what do we want to do with each of these rows? We want to give them to the scene template. We're going to add it's going to work here. Yes. All right. So basically what we're doing is feeding uh, the data table into our scene template and um, turning that into an array of rows that we're going to read as the scene progresses. So it might seem to you like all of this is a bit complex and obtuse, uh, and it sort of is. Um, why, why don't I have it all happening in one uh, blueprint? I can just say that through the process of creating our kind of large scale process, uh, we find it best to have these, these different blueprints that each do different things. And our scene template um, blueprint specifically gets incredibly complex because we like to add in a lot of things that could happen for each scene, um, like moving the characters around, uh, adding special effects, um, adding sound effects. Uh, our scene template is a huge monster and we like to keep that separate from things like uh, each character that's in the world. So again, this may seem um, unnecessarily complicated, but I can just say that from my experience, uh, this has been the best way for us to, to just generally set things up. So now we have a scene template that's got an array of rows from our data table of the scene. And that's all fed in. So now we just actually, actually have to launch uh, the scene. We'll go ahead and wrap up part two right here. Uh, this got a little bit longer than I intended, but um, in part three, we will basically take all these pieces and put them together into something that will play a scene. And we'll also create the widget that's going to display the text. So join me for part three. Thanks.